Go. Yo, good morning and happy new year. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to 42 West 18th Street, Adorama behind me and my guy, Omar Gonzalez. What's going on, boss? Am I allowed to talk now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put up the social stuff. Boom. First of all, I just want to say thanks to our sponsor, Rico. This is the first one of the year, and Rico jumped on board. And you know Rico. They've been around forever. There's the the famed GR3, and uh, you're a fan of that. So we're going to talk it. about that for a little bit. But Rico's been around forever, and I've been using the Theta V since it came out. It was my I always bring it to Comic-Con for some reason. I don't know why. It's super fun. If you want to check out anything about Rico, the GR series, the Theta series for the 360 cameras, yep, they're still out there. Go ahead and check out the links down below. I didn't know Rico did so much. They, you know what's crazy is I, I I went on the the little link you had for the sponsor yeah and I, was, I couldn't find the GR3 it was like they do so much they do, they do. I, my father is a huge fan of their tough camera mm. so it has a ring light and he like he just gets like this <laughs> <laughs> and he throws in the back of a car doesn't think about it he's like I love this camera get me seven more oh yeah so, you have to dive deep if you want to find the Rico GR because they do all kinds of imaging there's stuff there's seventeen and all that. versions of that yeah what are you kidding me yeah yeah there's oh. Pentax cameras and yeah yeah so, so and the other thing I want to say thank you to is Brulita for the coffee what's mm, going on very cheers, tasty man. cheers mm. nice. Mm. <laughs> Is there sugar in there? Because you no, don't need it. No. All right. You're black black, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think he's the first guy that shared my black black. Yes. All it's right. It's the only way to tell if the coffee's good. It's, so I don't like, I feel like people drink milk that happens to have a coffee tint. Yes. And I'm more of like a, well, where, where, and I also don't like to drink sugar. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's like a It's thing, a but. solid, so it's not easy to drink. Oh, sugar. <laughs> I feel like it coats my teeth and I'm going to end up drinking my teeth back. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Have you ever seen them make a nice coffee? How much sugar is in that? I, I, a street vendor once, there was a kid that ordered uh, iced coffee like in front of me. The guy's like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like three heaping. Anyway. Well, I think also people ask for that. I, I listen to people's coffee order in the morning and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> or, or like, there's always like the tiniest human and they're like, I would like seven shots of espresso in one cup. And I'm like, you have a tolerance level problem. You yes. need to get yourself together. I don't know. I oh my God. Well, anyway, guys, I, I'm really glad I got Omar in here because it was funny. They were, they were like, what, well, who, who's this guy? Well, what do we do for his bio? And I was like, honestly, he's just super positive and I like it. And it's true because in a world of YouTube where we have a lot of photo channels that are like living off of clickbait rumors that are, they push his gospel. They look for the negative to kind of really push it. You're kind of like, this is cool. I want to share this. Here you go. Yeah. I think it's funny you say that. I think where it all changed, because I've been on YouTube now since 2017, Thank you, subscribers. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> um, I feel that when it changes, when it became a job, a career for people. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it it's an op and YouTube is great. It's an opportunity for someone to make money, but now you're chasing those views and you're chasing the you know you're trying to figure out what the algorithm is doing and you can make good money with sponsorships and but it changed the whole game. It used to be just share with people you right. know what you're learning. So. But I think that happens with anything that gets large enough. People look, first of all, if people that don't do YouTube or stuff like that don't understand how much work goes into it and work equals time. Oh my gosh. And videos, every video I do for my channel costs me money. So like in the end, yeah, people are trying to find ways to offset the cost. If not make it the amount of time they're putting in, they get back. Right. Absolutely. So I can't blame them, but I just, I just thought it was really cool the way you approach it. You're like, Hey, I found this trick. I'm going to share it with you. And I think it came back to you. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, I'm not going to disparage anyone making a living on YouTube. I think the he benefit, totally did totally attack his channel before we started recording. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, I think the benefit I have is that I have a day job, and I think if you're thinking of doing, <clears throat> if you're thinking of doing YouTube, don't quit your day job because I think it'll just be more fun for you. And I think that's how I, appro I approach YouTube is when I feel like recording or making a video, like hit record and enjoy it. Yeah, but you also maintain a tact level, I find. Like, you, you could tell in your videos that you're trying to hit a standard all the time. Yeah, 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 for sure. And we met with some of the YouTube people when we went out to Sony Condo, where they flew out a bunch of creators. And the YouTube people didn't really want to tell you, like, what worked and what didn't work. But they don't know. They don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. People wanted to know, hey, you know, what gets the most views and what should I do about thumbnail? But... For example, one thing I know that's important is it's a visual medium. And if you're a talking head for too long, I think people will tune out. You could tell that by the, the, the algorithm. Mm -hmm. You have to give people visuals. So I've always tried 
if I'm talking about a camera like the Rico GR, I was about to say not sponsored by, but <laughs> oh, hold on. Hey, hey. <laughs> listen, people came to the channel because of the title and the thumbnail. They want to see the camera. Right. So I love putting B roll in there and me shooting with the camera. And you know what? If you look at the little hump of where most people view the, the video, it's the pictures, the images. They yeah. want to see pictures. That's why I keep telling uh, Fernando yeah. behind me is that whenever we do a new uh, product launch, I'm like, just load it with everything I shot. They don't want to look at me. They, look they want to see the pretty girl and how pretty she looked in that camera. And uh, Pixel you know. peep, go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, people, and everyone's looking for something different. I, I remember when we did the first Nikon Z7 video, the, the launch, the major big thing. I shot a, a, a makeup, a, a banshee type sea creature, and the first comment I read was, "I didn't need this. I need to see what skin tones look like." Oh and I always think about them, like, "Well, what is this person going to look for with this gear?" And that's how I'm going to apply it, and that's how I'm going to put it out there. Yeah, exactly. You know, because when people click on a video, they want what they clicked for. Yeah, for sure. You yeah, a hundred percent. I think if you are trying to get into YouTube, it's really about who you are. Because look, we were talking. It's a dime a dozen camera channels, gear channels. But people will subscribe for you. Like, are you authentic? And I know when I watch you, I know it's Seth I'm seeing, right? It's not a character you're, you're doing. I no, hope not. I'm, I, he's really faking it well. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> no, I, I think it's, uh, I, I always tell people it's like classical music. So everyone can play Mozart, but you go to the, to the orchestra that you connect with. Yes. And that's, everyone can teach you shutter speeds and F-stops, but you go to the person you connect with. The people that like Daniel hate me. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, we have a whole thing where his There's audience. A rivalry? Oh. Well, it's not even a rivalry. I just, I just know that the way he goes about things is a. We have the same mindset, okay. but different approaches. Same studio too. So yeah, people we, are yeah. like, oh, okay. They and we've tune. definitely, we've definitely rubbed off on each other. I can totally see like sometimes his style infiltrates, <laughs> and I can see him starting to do things I'm doing. I'm like, and then he'll be like, I know I stole that from you. I'm like, I know. I know oh sorry. my god. But it's, it's good to be around people, and that's what another thing is the community of things, which is what this is about, right? It's good to just be around other perspectives and points. I think. You, in your comments especially, I see that. I yeah. see, you don't see the same comments on your channel you see on other channels. You have a community. Well, there's a great button called hide user from <laughs> channel. <laughs> you, you have to uh, you know, prune the, 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 the hedges. So when you first start, you're going to get everything. And then you realize who's a troll and who's there to really like rile people up kind of thing. And you do hide user from channel. And uh, you, you reward the people that are positive. And it's sort of like you have to build an audience. I think you have to reward an audience. You have to give them what they want. You have to interact. So it takes a little bit of work. Look, people are saying things. Yeah. Well, and I'm not, no, we're not. Look at that. Seth is Daniel's sidekick. <laughs> wow, Ronald. There's a, there's wow, a Daniel Ronald. Fan. Wow, yeah. Ronald. <laughs> Ronald's been around a long time. I can tell you what all these people. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Ronald shoots uh, uh, Nikon, but he's, I think he's in the Netherlands. Marcus Beasley shoots Fuji, Nikon. Wow. And uh, who else we got in there? Kurt Bimler, I think, shoots Canon. You know, we, oh, Brad from Canada shoots Canon. Um, so it's, it's, you're also just not a YouTuber. I want to get off of that really quick. Because as much as we're like in that space and that is today, you're doing legitimate work. That's the other thing is a lot of people are just armchair dudes that are like, blah, 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 blah. But you're like, <laughs> I'm taking this to a job and seeing how it does, which is bold. Thank you. Thank Very you. Very bold. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important to really put your money where your mouth is. Show people examples of your photos. And... You know what happens th with YouTube is things get repetitive. Like there has to be the first person who strapped a GoPro on, right? And was like, I'm going to record myself shooting on the streets. Now everyone is POV, POV. And I can't watch a f an hour long video of someone doing POV street photography. But, uh, you know, it works for people. They repeat it. And a lot of times people are doing the same things. So my advice, if you're doing YouTube is, you know, share yourself have your own examples and be yourself. Don't be like, hey guys, <laughs> you know, like start, start every video that, you know, although I, I do that. I'm like, hey guys, Omar here, because I can't record if I don't say that. Yeah, but I think they, they come for your Ace Venturaisms and oh your Adam God. Sandler stuff. And I, you know, it's part of what it is. It's like people, no one wants to remember, no one will remember anything that's boring. When I do the live demos here, I make them scream. Yes. I try to make them like, I, I put out off color jokes to make them think for a second, like, what did I just hear? You know, I want them I, to stay on their toes, you know? Oh, that's so funny. The first time I, I heard <laughs> you, it's, it's so funny. You just reminded me. Uh, it was the photo expo, and I was walking around probably 2017, 2018. Oh, boy. Yeah. That would, when it it was hasn't like, even been here yeah, in yeah. five years. 
So uh, the Photo Expo in New York, Javits Center, and I was walking around and I heard someone screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and I turned the corner and you were doing a demo. You were doing a great demo. Uh, I think you either had a group or were talking about lighting a group and explaining the inverse square law to people, but like oh, in a very yeah. simple way. So you were like, you have to aim the umbrella to the person all the way at the end. And I was kind of just starting my career there. And it was like, but I knew you when I turned the corner. I had already seen you on the channel here. Oh, that's cool. And uh, it was, you were giving like, with so much excitement, you were bringing yourself, which was great. And that's my advice for everyone is don't be fake, man. Uh, it's not excitement. I literally just think no one hears me ever. So I just scream in their <laughs> face till they, they acknowledge me. Yeah, I'm just from Brooklyn. Oh, man. I, yeah, I, I had to actually, you know, when I first started doing public speaking things, I had to explain to be like, no, this is, I'm just from Brooklyn. Like, it's not a joke. Like, there's a lot of times, and I have a shirt that says, like, I'm not angry. I'm from Brooklyn. It's just, oh, that's We funny. just come across that way sometimes. And you have to, you can see the Midwest when you do those trade shows that they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, hold on. Calm down, lady. Listen, Alice, calm down, you know? Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the benefit that Seth has, you guys out there, is he does so much live and so many talks that you get very comfortable with that. I think where I am is I, I do takes in my video. Like I'll, some things don't work, I'll try again. I'll, some of my, <laughs> some, some of the things never make it because I'm either too goofy, like over the top kind of thing, too Ace ventura -y. Is it though? Uh, you know, how, how do you find the, where do you find the mark on that? When I replay, if it makes me laugh, <laughs> you know, like if it makes me laugh, but if I shake my head, I'm like, no, too, too stupid, you know? Oh, and okay. then I, so yeah, I probably should have this hard drive full of all this like, hey, alrighty then. You, you should know? put out a goof reel, just <laughs> once a year, put out a goof reel. I think it would do amazing. Actually, what I did do once was I put out a, uh oh, you just killed stop, the live. Stop, don't, he, keep he going. just hit the panic button. Keep oh, going. you guys are still here. All right. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did a video of what it really is uh, to do YouTube, the pain. I did a whole video of what, <laughs> and, it, and it was all like, uh, this is the, uh, using the a7 III uh, standard picture profile, you know, and then it was like, this is the Fuji X-T20, like all these tests that I had done, you know, this is this microphone, this is... <laughs> oh, that's brutal. It was so brutal. It was that's like, brutal. And you could see in my face, it was just like, oh, man. See, I, I, it's, I never got into that. When I started my channel, if you look at the very first videos, they're on a phone, like Ooh. old iPhone. And I'm just like, I don't know, we're just going to shoot. You I know? just saw you do some, uh, like, the slow shutter speed stuff on, like, it was Facebook Live. You were, yeah. like, rehashing, like, or finding old yeah. clips. And it didn't matter that it looked like crap. Like, you were providing. That's the thing. People spend, how many videos have you seen on YouTube where someone's setup is so <laughs> beautiful? But there's nothing there, you know? Like, <laughs> yes. Or my favorite is like, I'm going to start a channel. Here's an IKEA shelf full of random props of cameras, you might think, make me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Here's vintage camera number seven. I found uh, a flea market I never touch. I went down a hole, exactly, a hole. I went down a rabbit hole of office setups. That's crazy. And they're clones of each other, you know? And I felt, you know, I felt like, you know, I have to see what everyone does and try to do something else, mm. you know? And I think you should do that too. If you're trying to set yourself apart, it's like, all right, everyone's doing POV, but no one's doing POV where you talk, you know, out there. Like you should talk, instead of just the camera going and music, everyone puts like lo-fi chill on, you know? Yeah, but I think one of the things that I, I picked up on your channel really quickly was, when you started showing like your Marvel statues, mm. I was like, oh, this dude's really in. Like he's not yeah, just yeah. buying a shirt and going, hey, you know, like, yeah, shut up. <laughs> this is all, this is a knock. I, I love right. that. I, that's uh, so yeah, that's uh, what's, that, what's his name? Uh, McFarlane. McFarlane, yeah, another man. set. My favorite, my favorite Spider-Man of all time is McFarlane's. Yeah, that issue 300. Oh, the, uh, cover. the first appearance of, yes. uh, which is iconic. It's Spawn, what's his name? Spawn, uh, no, oh, no, Venom. 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 Yeah. He's that to my ribs. I got, I'm all in on it. We have a lot in common. You I, were yeah. a skater? Or a BMX. BMX, BMX yeah. I was a big skater. We used to have fights then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> back, in the, the, back in the early 2000s. You can like, understand. Why are these guys biking? Oh, uh, dude. Well, you guys ruin our, our coping. Like, get out of here. You know, you Brooklyn get out of Banks. Here. Yes, yes, exactly. Yep. The Manhattan side of the Brooklyn Bridge. Right. Love. Where the cops were. Yeah. Yep. So it's graffitied and you get jumped that wall. Have you seen it, it now? Yeah. It's There's gone. a giant yoga mat there. <laughs> There's, I'm not kidding you. They made it like a public park. They made a giant oh, so like, outdoor yoga mat. It's so weird. Guys, Google the Brooklyn Banks like in the 90s. It's just a ton of kids. Kids and skaters just 
I don't think there were many bikes there. Oh, yeah, there was. Check out the Animal Jam on the, uh, from the Brooklyn Banks. I, I've never seen more people there in my life. And it's so iconic, Tony Hawk put it in one of his video games. Oh, so, nice. But they didn't do a good job remapping it. Anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what I was going to say was, when I saw you do the statues, to me, I was like, anyone can talk about whatever topic we talk about. But what, I think it's important to put as peripherals the person. So when I did my channel, I was like, here's all the prints I have, like in frames behind me. So now great. you know I shoot black and white film. I know I do this. Like, they don't, I don't have to say it. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. have to get a sense of who they're connecting with. And then when I saw you throwing in images, not that you shot for the video, not that I was like, I'm, well, this you did for this one. But, yeah. but when you were showing stuff from like the, your Fuji days or your Nikon days, you were like, here's a bar mitzvah I shot. And I was like, this is a real scenario. That's this cool. guy was in low light, trying to figure it on camera strobe with this camera. I'm like, that's exactly what someone needs to know. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for that. I, I just got a comment today on one of my videos for lighting. They don't do well. Videos for lighting don't do well. Like, <laughs> Tell people, me more. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> like, no. Come on, people. I don't know if you know this, but photography <laughs> means light. Uh, because you built it on camera. That's why. I yeah. built mine on lighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I don't, I, a lot of people don't care about the camera stuff I do, but the guys that are into lighting, which is a way smaller demographic. So if you started on, you start You're so, on you hit the hammer on the nail. <laughs> uh, I think... I just tried to do a video on Voto, uh, like I did a Moto Vlog video that was sitting on my hard drive. It really didn't have anything to do with cameras and it didn't do well, but I didn't care. Right. Because it's, it's not my day job. You know, it was fun to make and I just wanted to share. So I think if you're trying to make a living on YouTube, it's going to steer you in a certain path. If I think you maybe have it on the side, it's going to be more fun and you can, you know, open up other opportunities where your job, like people look, looking you up, can see what your you know personality is like. Yeah, you know? but I mean, instead of looking at YouTube as a job, you still have to like what you're putting out there. That's your legacy, I feel, right? Yeah. So when I, oops, so when I did the, um, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, <laughs> my, my screen's here. So when I, uh, like, for example, the recent video I did that I thought was going to just bomb, but did really well. I wanted to go to Comic Con and show our world. I love that video. Thanks, man. Yeah. And I was like, man, this thing's hitting in over an hour. I'm, I'm texting Matt Irwin and Reach. I'm like, should I keep doing this? Yeah. No. I, I, that, like, <laughs> you think it's too long? Is it, bah, is it stupid? And I'm like, is no one going to click on this? And I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. And you and and I watched the whole thing and I, <laughs> you know, and it was with the little pocket too that you had, yeah. which was oh, that was another reason I wanted to see how that camera performed. And you then know, the three came out like five minutes yes. later, and I was like, no. <laughs> Can you bring Comic-Con back? <laughs> <laughs> I need some content. But I thought it was important for people to see our side of, like, our community. that Because Comic-Con to me isn't just, like, you know, the pop culture stuff. It's a converging of all different cultures. And the one I never saw represented was ours, who was constantly there. And I, and I, I even thought to him, like, this guy would be here. He's mm -hmm. running events, and he's a nerd. Yeah, like, yeah, he total would, nerd. He would be here, <laughs> yeah. you know? Comic nerd, photo nerd. Uh, yeah, so I'm enjoying the YouTube space, but... Just be aware if you're looking for content. Uh, one of the things that, that is a little rough when you're searching for a certain something is what's the, is it a sponsored video? Is it showing gear that was sent to the person, you know? Because a lot of times things are sort of thrown there like a review, but they're not really a review. They're really like a sponsored video. Yeah, people you know? are getting more honest about it because I think there's been enough years of backlash of going like yes and i get that in my videos all the time like i really appreciate this it wasn't one of those and they just go off and i'm like okay yeah yeah got it <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> and if you're the right person that could be like listen guys they sent me this to me we're just going to show you what it does you know that that kind of thing as long as you're honest with people they'll watch but so, you know as far as gear goes what's made you uh fluctuate between the brands because a lot of people like get into a system and they kind of run with it you were like i'm starting this channel on fuji film then you were talking a lot about nikon then you're in sony it's exactly what you said is being a nerd like i'm a <laughs> gear nerd like i i love all the cameras right and i think i i give every camera the benefit of the doubt you know i think a lot of people who are brand loyalists they kind of pick a brand and stick to it yeah tunnel vision but I love to see what they're all doing, you know? Oh, somebody, I love when people come to me like, but this camera does this. I'm like, cool. Three of them also oh, do that, yeah. but call it something different. You just don't pay attention. Yeah. Like, like for example, I'm um, going to Costa Rica soon in two weeks. Nice. And, um, you know, you start looking at micro four thirds. I'm like, I would never consider a micro four thirds, but maybe like for birding, maybe yes. You know, you have like an 800 equivalent that's like this big, 
you know, and it's kind of like, should I? But the noise and the, you know. I look at Micro Four Thirds for a different reason. People usually go for size. For me, it's the fact that it has a lot of computational stuff in it, like the mm. live comp. We were just talking to Susan last last time here about it. It can do shutter drag features that yes, other cameras I saw don't. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it has the processing overhead. So to me, that's where the strong suit comes in, not the size. And I also, I mean, I'm carrying a medium format now. Like, look, like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm like. Arr. But it's it's to me size isn't a priority to me because I'm like what I don't care what, if you ask for it I'll lug the the entire studio across the earth to go do something. But you're one of those. No, I'm always thinking. Yeah, yeah. I'm always thinking lightweight. I'm thinking size. Like for well, for the week I get it. You know. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're frail, man. Look at these arms. <laughs> it hurts. Those Popeye yeah, arms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for example, I I think of. You know, there's there's uh, like the Flashpoint. Ooh, drop oh, that name there. Oh. Oh, Flashpoint. He's trying to get a sponsorship, Fernando. He's <laughs> <laughs> the, the Flashpoint 200. You know, it, it, it's a perfect size to put in a bag. You can right. stack two of them. Where other companies are making like these soda cans. And now you got to think, all right, they're too tall for my bag kind of thing, you know. So I like compact lighting that stacks up nice, speed lights that stack up nice. You know, I'm not into round speed lights too much. I know you are, but. Uh. Well, I, I, nah, we're not going to get into this one. I can, we're not going to get into this one. Shape of speed lights. Oh, we'll make that a video. Oh, man, it's, it's so riveting, so riveting. No, I mean, it's, we all have our thing, but you're also doing events where you have to, everything has to be on you as you go along. Yeah, so sure. that's a consideration for you. You're not a hundred percent. I'm sure you deal with this too. It's like the FOMO. How much gear should you bring versus effort? Versus like, what can you produce? You know, you can bring 10 lights to a shoot, but I only have 45 minutes with the family before the guests arrive. Right. So it's kind of like, I better just stick to two lights and rock that, you know, and yeah, I want the seven foot umbrella, but I got to move through. <laughs> and I have, by the way, I've moved through like where the decor is. One time I knocked over like this huge glass thing and I could see it in slow motion. It was like, ah! it's, wait. and it smashed all the, all the candles and everything with my stupid seven foot umbrella. And uh, the, 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 the wait staff had to like redo all the decor and everything. So at that point I was like, you know what? Where's that video? Yeah, Where's that exactly. Video? Where's the BTS of that? Call that venue and get the security camera footage <laughs> and make a video. Are you kidding me? I know. So there was where I was like, yeah, the seven foot is the look I wanted, but learn how to use the smaller one and sort of, I learned how to, you can shoot each person and Photoshop right. it later. You know, like you start to learn workarounds for, you know, stupid stuff like that. Well, you also have to kind of, like we always say, have intent, right? So if you're not going for an end result, there's no like, should I, let me do 3,000 steps. Like, no, you're going for this. Yeah, you know true. technically how to execute. See, that's the thing though, is is if you are if you don't have, the, what comes first, the skill or trying everything and getting the skill, you know? So that's why practice is important. I think I made a video about this. Links below. No, no. Fernando? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. No, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's his social. Go, go chase yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, I made a video about how you should probably figure out what your lights do before right. you stand in front of a client. Like how much power is full. Right. Like, you know, and I think I didn't do that when I first started. I was kind of just like cranking the power up, Everybody turning it down, does. you know, and, and I, I finally sat down. And I was like, what can I, if I'm at like ISO 400, can I use a, you know, a uh, flashpoint, flashpoint <laughs> 600, you know, it, you can't, if you're eight, you know, like if you're in a temple or something that's dark, right. this is too much light, you know, that kind of thing. Also things change. I mean, we've gotten to a place where higher ISOs don't look that crazy anymore oh, and true, you can get true. away with things that don't need, always need to be true, with true, light, true. you know? So, and I think what you do, you have to stay a little stealthy at certain points and then certain points like we're doing a party, whatever. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And you, do you find that, um, like, for example, you use gear that is maybe like higher end or do you feel that you try to bring stuff like budget stuff to people like for your channel, you know, things that yeah, are more accessible? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, I, I, I'm not shy about it. I, I own pro photo and stuff like that, but I know the the value to community alone of bringing more people in by showing them a $200 light versus a $2,000. Totally, totally. And if you're someone that goes into the game having no concept of how to use it and you go, I'm buying the most expensive thing, you don't even know why it's awesome. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah. So it's like, I, and you're crazy. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're absolutely great. But to each their own, but I do think that we have to make this more and more accessible and that's where the whole industry is going. If you look at cinema, cinema has become more accessible than it's ever oh been before. Oh my gosh, yeah. Black Magic's giving you a camera in your, in your hands. 6K, yeah, yeah. We're doing 8.3K 12-bit raw internal on Z9s. And like, people what? still complain. I know, I know. <laughs> 
Go ahead, guys. Complain. <laughs> well, that's honestly, that's how I first came across your video is there were so little resources for Nikon. And I think that's how a lot of people discovered your channel at, at, a, at a, during an era. An era, for sure. Because yeah. I was Fujifilm first. I, I started my channel because I kind of... I liked teaching people. I actually was a teacher in a, in a former life, what? a science teacher in New York. What? That's yeah. dope. Like a PS New York? <laughs> PS New York, baby. Whoa, I went to PS 207 as a kid. Oh, nice. I taught at a couple of high schools in New York, science. And um, Did you wear a vest, a bulletproof vest? Did you wear a vest? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it was, there were no metal detectors, but, uh, <laughs> which is a thing, those of you in other countries. Yeah, I don't think they realize it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are schools with metal detectors, but I wasn't in one of those schools, but... I missed teaching when I left. I actually was doing photography on the side and I had to decide. I thought this person was waving at us. <laughs> like, Someone's cleaning the window and I'm like, <laughs> uh, no fans here. Um, <laughs> They're in the chat, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're here. Uh, hey, Miguel is here. Look at that. Miguel Quiles. Well, we didn't even pay attention to this chat. Wow. I know. Gosh, we're going to have to scroll back. My XT20 teacher greets from Germany. You taught someone yeah. in Germany. Well, that's what I was going to say. I started my channel with like, I really couldn't figure out how to use the camera. I'm like, let me turn on video here and record me learning the camera. And no agenda, just right. teaching this camera as if I was a teacher. And so the Fujifilm was first. And then like what you said, I started using other cameras. Love the Nikon colors. Yeah. The ZF is incredible. But also this little Ricoh GR just i just i didn't know i was gonna love this camera i know you want it i know it yes <laughs> it's like the one thing i don't have and it's driving me kind of crazy look at this guys <laughs> Look at this. And I don't even have the grip on. I know. <laughs> the grip's over there. Which this is a great camera too. We'll talk about that in forget a minute. Forget about I it. Forget about it. I can't. But I don't know, you're a New Yorker too. Like I don't feel comfortable like sort of doing street photography because we know like we want to be left alone on the street, you know. Yeah. We, you, so I, I'm not into the street photography where, where people are like in the face and sort of, I would rather be more stealthy. That Bruce for, Gilden style that like. Oh, uh, no, no, yeah. no. I couldn't. I, I, it's Listen, I think that there's a decision to be made in street photography where you're either a participant or an or yes, viewer. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of people choose to, if you want to not be a participant, you're either using long lens to get away or something discreet, which is what a lot of range finder mm -hmm. is about. And I really do find, which is why I love the X100V. It's like, mm, I yeah. never feel like I'm picking up that camera going, Oh, yeah, every yeah. other camera feels like work to me. That camera, I don't know what it is. Do you use the flip up screen or I, the viewfinder I, guy? Viewfinder guy. Really? And I forget that that has a flip out screen every time. <laughs> it even has, the Fuji cameras have a touch to shoot. Yeah. So you can actually have your, you know, just pretend you're like looking at a picture and you could be shooting street photos. But then that opens up the question, like you're being so stealth, like so sneaky and, you <laughs> yes, know. Yes, I'm a creep. Yeah, yes, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm going to put this on the ground and. You know what I like about yeah. the, the LCD though is if you do flip it out, you, you're at that waist level experience. Yeah, for which sure. Which I think a lot of newer photographers that haven't been around forever never really got to experience that brownie camera, that Hasselblad. 100%, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I think now it's kind of like, you got to chop off a few heads in your photos and then <laughs> yeah yeah and then learn how to do it yeah for sure because the alternative is getting down on the ground which just draws more attention to yourself uh but what i loved about this little camera was the image quality was just it was ridiculous ridiculous so i took a few shots and i was like wow this little thing oh. is so powerful oh yeah look my travel photos this is what it's great for too is just this is the rico uh gr regular Look at those cigarettes. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, I do actually. I think people, so a lot of people count out Rico and Pentax as a brand off the bat, right? Yeah. And I've, I've always loved their colors. I think they've done, and yeah. they do great build quality. For sure. I think they do some really interesting things. Easy that, to edit, great uh, dynamic range. Um, come on, your Wi-Fi here. Oh, I mean, yeah. look at the, look at that range. I know, it's Beautiful. crazy. So um, I just... I just love taking it out for travel and it's it's pocketable. It's like the one camera that is pocketable. You know, you know, some of the Fuji films Fujifilm made a camera called the X70, which everyone's waiting to be updated. <laughs> and it's the same size as this. I want the X E three, like the like a newer version of that. That might come actually. We we don't want we don't talk rumors here, but uh <laughs> there's rumors that yeah, the next iteration of that might come. You can still talk wish list and I hope that comes. I think, you know, there's a... Um, the battle of those camera companies trying to figure out how to counteract phones is really convenience. 
Yeah, hundred percent. You know, it's shareability, and if it's on you, what they have going for them now is quality. Absolutely. So people who see a cell phone photo and zoom in, they kind of see like that digital sharpening, and you know, the waxy skin, the waxy skin. Oh. Uh, the phones are getting better. I have the Google Pixel Eight Pro, and that thing. You know, if you're just taking snaps uh, when you're traveling, I mean, it's good enough. So you know? you know, we shoot with a lot of models here for demos, and at some point, one of them will always hit me up and go, Seth, I'm trying to do a self taping. And my phone makes me look horrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and so they ask I what camera. You were say, well, you do look horrible, huh? Yeah, right. No, they, they they ask what camera they should get, and they usually already own a camera, and they never touch it because they can't figure out how what they're trying to get to do with it. You get them going on that, they go, oh, like one girl was like, it doesn't even show my ethnicity correctly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's, it, and people don't talk about that. That's the thing I always try to keep in the back of my head when I do a video is who are we talking to? Because the people in the comments are just photo nerds that see everything but you just brought up a perfect example someone will find your video that just wants the basics right. or wants to know like should i get this camera to photograph my kids you know so i always think of those people too when i make a video you know well what happened with when i found your video is everybody this is at a point where uh nikon just went mirrorless and all the the usuals were going they're going out of business they didn't oh my do this gosh. they didn't Remember do that nikon was going out of business for the last 20 years they've been saying this and somehow, but I, I, I actually was nervous for them. Nah, I can't. They're, they're a hundred year old company and it, they were in gen one and they, gen they one. figured out that and their system, if you look at it is well thought out as a whole and it's just getting better every day. But when I found your video, it was like the one that wasn't saying that it was talking about focus modes oh, and it was next to Richie's video. And I was like, mm, these are my guys. Richie's awesome. Richie yeah, is awesome. He really, he really, now there's someone who's doing it right. He actually does work closely with Nikon. He is working with Nikon. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Where he works for Nikon UK. So close that he's working with yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> and he is, you could tell he's honest. He is like, honest. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. It's just, it was really refreshing to see someone actually talk about how to use it rather than like this doom and gloom. And that happens with every brand. You have to get through the first layers of people talking about doom and gloom for whatever brand to get to what you're trying to find. <laughs> That's why I always think whatever you put out as a video, you delivered no matter what it was, you're like, uh, one, what was the video? You were like, is Nikon's autofocus awful or is it genius? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For and I was sure. like, what? I was like, <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's trying to figure things out and then sharing what I let people decide too. Maybe they don't think it's genius. Maybe they, but at least they see how it works. You know, the philosophy of the design. Every, we were just talking about this when we went live. It's like whatever brand camera model you have, whatever happened on that body, there was a person or people behind that, and there was also two years of development where they had to predict the market and they had to figure out what parts would be available and how much it would actually cost. And, yeah, and where we would. I mean, even card format. Would those cards be USB C? I know someone's like, why don't you put two CF Express cards in this? Come on, yeah, you know. Well, but it's like, I love SD cards, you know. So I'm on the other side. I want the CF card, but I love if you don't have a CF Express card, SD cards are everywhere and they're cheap. How do you feel about internal memory? I like what the ZF did with the little. Some people were like, "Why well, put SD. a little micro SD card in here? What were they thinking?" They did one card slide. You'd say they're going out of business again. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> that would be the complaint. Now people are like, "Should I complain about the micro SD card?" Why? Why? That's the internal storage that we've been asking. So I love like Leica has internal, internal. storage. This guy has a little. You can actually take the card out of this. And it shoots about 40 RAWs. Oh, well, there you go. You could use it like a film camera. You could go out with just those. Or if you shot JPEG, you could shoot like 100 JPEGs. But at least you don't have a card in there. You forgot you it. Can you could still, still use the damn camera. Right. Yeah, That's one of the things I liked about the Leica is I know whatever I picked it up, you could just go. Yeah. I, I didn't have to think about the card or whatever. I think they got 64 gigs. And uh, I think the other one is 128. I don't remember. Fernando not paying attention. No, Come on. Go. <laughs> no, he's on the chat. Anything good? Any questions or anything? You guys can ask questions, by yeah. the way. I you know you're part of this, right? The ZF surprised me, by People, the way. Cool. I don't, I don't know how you felt about it, but I, I, I said a full-frame retro is going to come. But what I thought it was going to be was just like, take a Z5, slap some dials on it, call it a day. When I they gave it to me, I was like, why does it look like a Z8 to my eye? Yeah. What the, are these the, things that are happening here? And I was like, oh, no, they're going to sell a ton of these. They are. And now there's like a community. I don't know if you guys have seen like on Facebook and stuff, people like dressing them up, putting like little, <laughs> little hats on little them. Hats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Barbie clothes. No, no, that's a different channel. Well, yours is all decked out. You just brought yours. And I was like, what is all this stuff you have? Yeah, I put a little. Uh, do I have to get it now? Yeah, Come yeah. on. Hey, I, I'm sorry. I came prepared. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Um, oh, you got, got the, the grip. red button on there. That's pretty much it. But That's a Fernando thing. Fernando does this to all his Fuji films. He puts oh, this red button on smart man. There. Yes, yes. So uh, I think people are getting ones with uh, like grips with a little red line, which is retro, you know, old film cameras. But Such vanity. I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm that club. I like my cameras to look nice. That's why I got the Ricoh GR Street Edition. Uh, but I was going to say that the one thing I wish Nikon would do, which a lot of people have said, is they need um, lenses maybe with a little aperture ring. I think people, if they want the analog experience, uh, that little aperture ring maybe will bring it over the top. You know, I, I get that. I just don't think they're maybe when they're like farther into this, into farther it, in, and they're like, farther ah, in. we got to put something new out. Uh, put a ring on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's the retro hey, version that's a song. two. Yeah, you know, like because that's what all the brands do. They're like, there's a version three. Well, why don't you put this out years ago? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the the, the system. I, I just like looking at a system as a whole and the way I can plug and play things. Like, you know, I'll use the the Z6 to film myself. I'm shooting primarily with a z9 you know like i get the lenses go across things all the batteries are the same the colors match the i mean colors I, match. I found with match. yeah the menus <laughs> match i found with other brands that was my biggest dilemma was um that the colors didn't match if i went from one generation to the next and i found with nikon you know you can grab an older camera put a standard you know lightroom color profile on there it's like wow it's the same green you yeah. know it's the same so well, with, with, you know, give or take, it's close enough that you could, you know, match well, them all. I stuck with Nikon. Like, I always had different camera brands, but Nikon was the one that stayed with me my whole career. And one of the reasons it stuck with me is I spent 15 years in the commercial makeup industry. And out of all of them, it felt like it was hitting accuracy. Yeah, yeah. Really nailing it. And um, and I just kept sticking with it. And it's like, I know that that Pantone red is going to be the close, close I can get to it. Yeah. And I, I heard a comment once from someone that was great. They thought of cameras as film stocks. Right. Yeah. Where yeah, the, you the almost sensor. pick like the sensor right. has a, you know what? Some of them just resonate with you. And I'm not a fan of like uh, film simulations that look really old and grainy, like where you're trying to, you know, emulate older film. Right. I'd rather it look like how the Nikon, like Joe McNally's work, where right. it's like the real colors of the world. Well, I, I appreciate the film simulations that are color grade instead of an effect. Yeah. So oh, yes. I don't want fake grain. I want that color grade. Got you it. You know, so that's kind of what I grab. Good starting point, yeah. When I was shooting with the 100S, I couldn't find a film simulation for the RAW that felt as accurate as something else. So I kind of didn't always pick it up for those jobs. But now that I got the 102... He owns this camera, yeah, by the way. I'm very happy right <laughs> He's now. He's so happy. Look at him. He's smiling but right it, But it has a new film simulation, Riala Ace. Yes. And I put a chipboard up day one. I was like, oh my That's God, it. it's accurate. Well, I was like, the, oh yes. Not only accurate, it's like warm and it has like just a Something great feel. Yeah. yeah, there's a richness to it, but it's, totally. not, it's not saturated. Rich, but not saturated. So you're shooting JPEG with it? No. No, no, no. The raw, the raw. If you go to J Capture One, shoot into oh, Capture, Capture One. One will match the, the raw. Stays yeah, have with, you put them side by side? They're pretty good. Yeah, they like the yeah. And it's one of the few few that actually takes the the profile to the raw file, and you can take it off later. But everyone else is like, the raw is just this bland raw, and here's your vivid JPEG. And <laughs> yes. I'm like, I want to shoot the raw that way. Though. All right. Well, I see your real ace, <laughs> and I raise you um, the new profile on here that they added what the uh, rich pro. Rich Portrait. I have not touched that. What? So I feel like Rich Portrait. I got portrait. handed a beta when they handed it to me. Did you get a beta? No, this is an alpha. That's a production. B alpha. No, oh, if, sorry. If it was alpha, there'd be no branding <laughs> on it. If there was a. <laughs> no, I, I, a lot of things aren't in the cameras we get. Oh, that's right. You get them before people ever see them. No, yeah. I was a consumer. I actually got this camera and uh, it has a portrait. It's called Rich Portrait. The skin tones are like what I felt when Real Ace came out. Really? It's not standard. It's not portrait. It's called Rich Portrait. Check it out. I just bought way too many cameras. I can't do another one. I no, can't. I mean just. I gotta I mean, look at behind you. You yeah, got a whole yeah. store here. There is someone in the in the chat asking if you shot the uh, the Zeiss the ZX one at the Z ZX one XZ one. Oh my god! I get questions all the time. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have, but uh, I didn't. It has Lightroom <laughs> built into it? <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, no, I have not tried that. All right. Well, there's your answer, guys. There's just too many. <laughs> there's just too many lenses. And, you know, people always ask me, should I get the 23 or the 35? And I'm always like, wow, you could do everything with both of them. You could be terrible with both of them. It, I always tell them, like, here's examples. I don't know how you shoot. Exactly. You, you know, could do a portrait with a 35. You yep. could do it with 85. You know, it's it's and you can make things work. Like yeah, yeah I, sure. I try to get people to a place where they don't get stuck on the focal lengths and they get into 
trying to gravitate to their own style. Yeah. Because then you're going to find the tools that do what you're trying to do. But like, I've always been a wide angle guy rather than a long lens guy. And if you look at a lot of my portraits, it's 24, 35s, mm. 14s. Yeah, I'm a little like 50, but I skip 85. I'm like 50, 105. Oh, yeah? Yeah. oh I get it. Yeah, so those two are like, you know, the two primes that I like. Um, but I would say, yeah, if you don't know what your look is, a zoom is just basically the answer. See, go into like your Lightroom stuff and see what's the focal length that you mostly land on. Exactly. Get yourself a zoom and just look at the way you're shooting. Yeah. There, there's a question in the chat from Eric, who I think, Eric, you're the same Eric that comes and hangs out at every event, buddy. Uh, any uh -huh. tips on breaking in the industry or getting potential clients for jobs since IG and other social media outlets platforms are shutting for, mm -hmm. oh, shutting photographers, videographers and creatives yeah, out. I've heard that. Uh, I wouldn't rely on Instagram to get jobs for sure, but I think it just starts locally. You know, you if 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 you want to get to into the industry, you're maybe going to have to find other pro photographers to shoot with. Um, you know, assist, 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 and really just try to go out there and be like, I'll carry your bags, kind of thing. And you'll learn the trade and the market in that area, and you could start maybe doing associate photography work or start your own business, you know, like a smaller business, friends, family, friends, and you have to be good. You know, you can't just have a camera. You actually, and you don't know you're good for like the longest time, you know? <laughs> or you think you're good for oh, the yeah, longest time. you think time. you're good. That's what it is. You think you're good and yeah. you're not. But if you assist someone and you're, you're dependable and consistent, after a while, that photographer sometimes goes, I can't make it to this thing. Would you take this client? Oh, gosh. And then that's, that's where step. it starts. Yeah. I mean, that's how it started for me a lot of the times was a guy was like, I can't do be in two places at once. Do you want this? I should, I should, uh, I said something. I should take it back is uh, you're not good. I feel sometimes that I'm not good. And I think that's important because I, th I feel like I always want to get better. I you should always, 100%. So you always are looking for the next each and now that it's the new <clears throat> happy new year by the way <laughs> 45 minutes in happy i know right <laughs> how long do we have to say that for but uh <laughs> now that it's the new year have goals you know you should be looking at other people's work and try to yes um you know raise the bar a little bit yeah and also don't get stuck on the way they do it or what they're doing like a lot of people come to me that are that come to these chairs and then show me something like that is a hundred percent photoshopped like cgi that's like not lighting yeah, i don't know yeah, what to yeah. tell you <laughs> you know uh, but if you're if you're after that then maybe reach out and see the way they're working yes. or something like that but sometimes you have to I, I how many times have you gotten this someone just bought a camera and they, they they've been following all these other people and they go why doesn't my stuff look like this yes, and yes, it's like because yes. it's not a genuine shot like, I, I, mean, it's I know I, it's like ai or something <laughs> but people are like what film simulation is that and the, and people are like it's not it's a lot it's uh you know yeah uh i was gonna say too that um just be, you know you it could be crippling if you look at other people crippling. and what they're doing it could be crippling you can if you overthink it, you know, if you see people's work and you're just like, oh, I'll never get there, you ha there's levels. There's levels and you have to climb each rung. I think sometimes some of us look five rungs, you know, up and we're just like, oh, forget it. I think people get Forget stuck it. just watching videos and never picking up the camera. Great point. It's like, cool, you learned all that stuff. Did you apply it? No, because I see them in all the other comments, the same person that's like commenting on all videos. I see the <laughs> same people, you know? It's like, how can you be shooting if you're a full-time <laughs> commenter? You know, stop commenting, you know? Get out no, there. No, don't stop commenting. Help the algorithm. <laughs> like and subscribe. What are you doing, man? <laughs> well, he was good. We, Sorry. We had him for yeah, a minute, right. you know? There's like a hook now. Thank you. All right, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a while. How are you? You good? Thanks for coming. I'm live next week, Thursday. I'm shooting live, 5 p.m. You get Hang regulars? Out. That's a regular right there. Yeah. That's a regular right there. <laughs> you know, do you feel like our industry, um, when you walk around like the, the trade floor, the shows, like it's like a certain crowd, like elderly. You know, like we're an older group, no? Where's all the young folk? Have you been to WPL last year? No, no. It was very young. Very young, really. I, think that I feel like the New York one is like... The New York one hasn't existed, really, you know? So it's yeah, like, yeah. I think, um, the first of all, the trade shows are, are the people that aren't just like, I'm shooting for Instagram or whatever. There, there are some people that are trying to elevate to either a business like weddings or you have newborns or something yeah, yeah. like that. Um, I, listen, I go to those trade shows and I'm shooting zombies and aliens and they don't know what to make of me. <laughs> and then they throw me on a stage and I'm like, okay, guys. I was going <laughs> to ask you that. Yeah, yeah. Since you've been around for so long, do you adjust to the younger, the 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds? Because when I look at my demographics, they're not the main viewers it starts happening after that 30 
you know, 30, mid 30s to, you know, like the demographic is older. Well, I think when you talk about camera gear, it's a, there's a, a financial aspect to it. You know, a few thousand bucks to get going. Retired sometimes. folk, they have money. Yeah. They can buy those zoom lenses. Yeah. You know, the retired guy's like, I'm going to shoot some puffins. <laughs> uh, and they take the giant lens and they shoot a duck. And that's great. You know, oh, if you're, like you're the enjoying 600 it. 600 1.4. I need you know, $14,000 like, to shoot that seagull right now. You know, like that's really what it is, right? Exactly. So, and God that's bless fine. you, by the way. Yeah, you yeah, have that, the money. You worked it. your whole life. Live your life. Live your it. life. Do we it. love you. She's not yeah. around anymore. I get it. No, it's, 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 but it's like. Oh gosh. No, but it's like. Terrible. But, <laughs> yeah, no, no, but it's like, listen, we're all going to shoot for the different reasons in the way. And um, I think what I'm able to do is. When I because I shoot such weird off the wall stuff, I have to show them. I have to prove to them I can shoot normal first of all, which yeah, I think yeah. I've done over the years with the yes. live demos. And I think shooting live is super important. I think a lot of people that don't shoot live, as um, if you're trying to be a resource for education, yes. you're kind of cutting people off at like your opinions rather than showing your applications. And there's people that pick up the weird little things you're doing, like how you did this. What? Oh but, my gosh, you, you and know. Daniel, yeah. The, even when you mess quote mess up, you're adjusting. That's important to see. You know, that's something I would edit out. Because, you know, I don't mess up at all, ever. <laughs> but you guys, you know, like, you adjust. Oh, that's too bright, that light. Let's bring it down. Two stops, you know? It's yeah, and it's about feel. And and it, lighting is a science and a feel. It's the same. It's as much as one as the other for me. And it, you can't teach a feel, but you can get them the facts. You know what that light's going to do. It is physics, bro. Yeah, yeah. But me and him also have a style where we don't retouch, really. Yeah. We're just like, this is, we believe it right in, in camera. Yeah. Well, not even that. We just want to be honest. I, when I, so the last time we did here before we built the space was my own mother as my model. I'm not retouching yes, my mom. No. <laughs> I want to see everything on that woman's face that I put there. Every that wrinkle. Be great. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it's, it, by the way, the space that you built, you guys is amazing. Thanks. It's man. like a great learning space. Omar's going to do a class here one day. Uh, maybe. It'll be on YouTube. Success. He's gonna it's be gonna positive. Be, yeah, it's gonna be. How many <laughs> cameras can I fit in my pocket? That's exactly. that's the whole class. Oh, I was gonna say that too is crippling. The amount, the amount of cho look at the choices we have. I call it gear drunk. I don't know what to pick up sometimes. Well, I'm I'm going to Costa Rica soon. If anyone has suggestions, I want to photograph birds. <laughs> yeah, yeah <I'm> gonna, <laughs> gr bird street photography. <laughs> yeah, that guy's a little far. <laughs> You know, it's like the amount of lenses you can get, like, you know, there's a gazillion types, like Nikon's making all kinds of four, like 400s. There's so much overlap for the 400. The PF lenses are tiny for what they are. PF lenses, but then it's cost and it's like, do you want to zoom for birds? Do you want to, you know, you're going to be at 600 anyway. Should you just get a 600, you know? Well, the 100 to 400, right? And then if you want to put a custom button to crop through the DX, if you really yeah, want to shoot that the way. Yeah, the Z8 so I could crop. The Z8, yeah. yeah. I just bought that camera as a secondary. Secondary. Oh, my God. You still? don't, yeah. But, my primary. But that's, that's the other thing I wanted to ask you about because you have sued so many brands and you're doing it for a living. You yeah. have to have redundancy. So where do you start doing that when you have so many systems well i shoot with i have four cameras okay i shoot um nikon and sony like interchange it's whatever mood i'm in it's because i like i said i love them all it's like so, picking music like what do i feel like listening well, to yeah, today I, i'm gonna be do like, i feel like heavy lifting today I'm, nah, I'm gonna yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm noodling i'm noodling we're gonna you know and uh i have like this is the backup you know, this has become the backup. The Z6 II used to be the backup, Bro. and now it's crazy that this like That's what I con said. consumer camera, the autofocus is so good. And then in the car, I always throw like some DSLR in case they all three yeah. of those break. I'm like, 5D Mark III. Nice. <laughs> old faithful. Old faithful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we all have an old faithful. I still have a D50 laying around because I'm like, you never uh, know. Something's going to cool. go wrong. That's yeah. sad. That's like the last DSLR. It, I always keep the last gener of the generation. So like I have my F6 still. I have my D50, uh, and cool. I'll probably keep whatever mirrorless goes on when it starts installing in our brains. You know, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you try to sell some of that stuff now, guys, when you get gear, you really have to think about resale because... Yes, if you're going to progress. If you're going to progress because the prices are... you. If you're buying used, there's a used department here, right? So that's where this came from because my 100S, the used market was going crazy because everyone was flipping them. And then the the original OG GFX 100 came the down guy. to like yeah. three three four thousand dollars. So I'm like, oh no! If I don't take if I don't make a run at this now, yeah. this camera's not going to give me enough value to. And the opposite, if you buy a camera new now, it's just like a car. Once you take it out, or, you can't get rid of it. We're starting to see cameras with no shutter. 
That means no shutter count. Does that mean they lose value? Does that mean, what does that mean, right? Yeah. So, I mean, A93, no shutter. Shutter count Z9. zero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think they're going to have to start putting counters of how long the sensor is operating for. So I always use the example, like this camera has zero on the shutter count, but it's Ooh. on for hours a day. <laughs> oh, like I'll buy it. <laughs> like new, you know, but yeah. how do you know? How do you, you don't know at all. Yeah, so crazy I, I get gear drunk all the time and especially with lighting because i have a small light kit a medium and, a, and my big lights and i'm like oh my god i don't know where to start I don't, I, and again it's crippling you don't know what to grab and i think if you pare down your that's another it's, that's another kind of way you can go is uh just pare down your gear a little bit and it you know if you like for example i just went on a trip to new orleans and i only brought the 40 and it makes you use the 40 it makes you use the 40 you know like i wasn't doing a job or anything but oh yes <laughs> You're just hitting us with your uh, images. Sorry, just, it, I, don't, I don't know what the timer is on it, but and, and it's like it's like a creepy zombie and creepy thing. Oh man, sorry, man. Yeah, no, it's all good. I feel like you could shoot cool with that kind of stuff. I mean, you got the you've seen so much renditions of it with the Marvel and all the all the movies and stuff. Like it creeps into your head. Yeah, lighting is everywhere. You know what what lighting has done? It's ruined movies for me. I know, I know. <laughs> it kills the magic of everything. You're like, oh man, they left that gaff tape on that wall. Oh, they no. left that gaff tape <laughs> exactly. Well, well, I don't. I don't know if you know Wes Anderson. Yeah, of course. No. Do you know the community that exists? <laughs> no. Oh, you got to hear this. There's a whole, <laughs> if you go on Instagram, guys, and look up accidentally Wes Anderson, there's a whole community that searches for compositions and looks that look like Wes Anderson's cinematography. Yeah, because he keeps it very stationary. Yeah, yeah. It's like very symmetrical. It's very quirky. Yep. The fonts are all like old and stuff. So people... And it's actually a book that came out recently, uh, which my daughter gifted me with, which was awesome. And uh, man, it, it's, it just is a great way to see the world is, just look it up, accidentally Wes Anderson, not sponsored by, sponsored by Rico. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> Rico GR. No, I think my biggest influence is movies by far. I mean, Scorsese, my whole life. Everything, Harsh Scorsese. Lighting. Everything, Scorsese, yeah, yeah. man. Aronofsky, you know, really looking at all this stuff. And and for a long time, my early, when I was doing fine art gallery stuff, if you looked at that stuff I did, it was cross-processed slide film, shot, uh, printed on C-prints, all looked like Fight Club. Oh, my god! And I'm like, I, it, and it hit me when I had it all up on a, a wall once. Cutter, you're like, oh, well, it's got that I... weird off cyan. And I always processed my my prints for skin tones only let every other color go where it goes mm, okay and after all i was like oh my god i just put fight club in a gallery like i like <laughs> it hit me like a freight train and then i started realizing like all this stuff is infiltrating my brain so i got very conscious of what i watch prior to co uh, commercial campaigns mm. so when i started doing the 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 sfx makeup i was watching like the most indie creeped out horror i could the night before mm. and i would watch things kind of creep into my shots and I'd be like that was cool where did I think of that uh, yeah and you know? I'm, I was the opposite I was looking at soft soft like because um, <laughs> I was photographing children when I first started uh, kids and families so I was looking at like the lighting in uh, like Titanic you know like in oh, the beautiful. daytime scenes the lighting in um, I don't know if you know the uh, Lemony Schnickets yeah the yeah, series of unfortunate series events. of unfortunate absolutely events. if you guys want to see some a, big a huge you know they used like entire sky like a whole thing a huge panel. if you look up yeah. yeah bts a humongous panel like it's so big one of the best shows ever for lighting ozarks ozark the lighting in that show is and it's oh. and it's like natural lighting but they're using they're 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 zhuzhing it up a little bit but it's like it's so toned yeah it's so the oh it's so good it's so good <laughs> that's like uh the the chess thing what's the chess uh netflix show fernando the the queen of oh, queen's, yeah. queen's gambit thank you queen's gambit uh great or breaking lighting. bad amazing lighting great lighting yeah, yeah, yeah and then when you start noticing the lighting then you, you don't follow the story yeah you don't follow you're, the, you're out you're totally <laughs> like, out what'd they say honey i was looking at the hair light yeah yeah and then, well, I remember I went. We, me and Fernando went somewhere, and he's like, "Did you watch uh, that James Bond movie on the plane?" I'm like, "No." Nah. He's like, "I saw every tube everywhere, <laughs> tube, 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 tube." And that's and every time we saw someone, he's like, "Hey, did you guys watch that?" I saw tubes like all the whole trip. He just kept on bringing up these tubes he saw everywhere. I'm like, "Got it, bro." Tubes, got like it. those nan lights. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, these yeah. things. Oh, cool, cool. I never know. Now I'm gonna notice the tubes because yeah. <laughs> you can hide them everywhere. Yeah, for you know, sure. and you can make them practical, so you can put them in where you would see fluorescent 
fluorescent bulbs, you put the tubes and yeah. all that, you know? So I'm trying to bring that into my photography as more, especially when I'm shooting, since I shoot bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, at temple sessions, I want it to look painterly, cinematic. So I like big lights, like a seven foot umbrella that looks like a window. And, uh, and a seven foot umbrella is a lot easier to carry and way more cost effective than a seven foot box. So Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing the light you can get from that. And uh, yeah, just again, if you're a solo, but sometimes I bring three lights and I'm like running for the background <laughs> light to like move it and then running to the, and people are looking at me like, oh, what's going on? I would on? love that BTS. You need someone filming yeah. one of your jobs for you. <laughs> I, I have, I have a little BTS. Uh, I have one that's called um, three speed lights, cheap lighting, look it up. When it comes to the events though, cause you do a lot of bar mitzvah stuff, do you feel it's important to learn the culture? Or you're just absolutely. like, it's about the event. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah. So you have to know, uh, for example, with mitzvahs that you can't really shoot the, if it's a more conservative temple, you can't really shoot the event. You actually never shoot when the kid is really reading the Torah. one of those kids. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> you got, yeah. <laughs> but do you remember any of it? Oh, uh, I don't know. Keep us over here. Baruch atah. Baruch atah. Eloheinu. Melech. Come on. Eloheinu <laughs> is that yeah, yeah. is that the, that's Shabbat, right? That's Shabbat. That's Shabbat. That's bread, exactly. I'm horrible. I read in phonetics, kids. I was a horrible kid. So you learn <laughs> that you learn you learn what's important, like when they're you know when we're cutting the bread, when we're you know doing the toast with the wine. But also, my favorite thing is that we can't shoot the ceremony. How many wedding photographers are like they go into a church and it's like the worst lighting? They can't use flash, so they're like, "Oh, these pictures are all going to be black and white." <laughs> you know, it's like I'm an artist, black and white. <laughs> so, uh, but so what's great about temple sessions? Those those of you that want to get into, I can't shoot the real service, which is actually a benefit because we shoot the rehearsal. We actually go before, oh, nice. and we go either on a Thursday or Friday, and like, I can set up all my lights. Like, Josh, a little to the left, Josh. Yeah, yeah, Josh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I love it. So I get to play with lighting and not have that, you know, um, that crazy wedding thing where you have to, you know, you're at the mercy of someone else's lights. So I love that. Also, the kid's not sweating. Like, no, he's no. not freaking out trying to do the, the reading. He's like, he's just like there for the shot. Totally. You know? And we'll tie it back to the title of this like podcast, uh, which is like positivity. You know, I think that's the big strength if you're getting into photographing families and kids is it's there's no bridezillas. It's mostly about the kid <laughs> and the love and the, you know, it's all family uh, kind of. I think the difference is a bar mitzvah, a bar mitzvah for a kid is like, is like a milestone. Weddings for a majority, and I'm sorry, but the, for a majority of people, is their 50 minutes of fame. Mm. And they act like it's like their minute. Got right? it, got and it. It has yeah. to live like the way they want to live it. They've had in their head forever. No kid is dream one day I'm gonna get bar mitzvah. No, you're gonna get bar mitzvah, dude. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean it, it, you could see it both ways. You know, smaller weddings and you know, bigger mitzvahs, which you know, some of them get really big. But it's a great industry. It's family oriented. And I just love that the day is broken up. So like a wedding is usually, you know, eleven AM to midnight. Mm. But a mitzvah can be, you know, you just shoot a little bit before the service, and then, you know, it's it's just great. I just love it. Yeah, but they're asking, what's your favorite bar mitzvah? What's your favorite bar mitzvah song oh in the my. chat? Oh, of course, the horror. You know the. Uh, oh, if you throw a guy in the chair. La, 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 la. Yeah, throw I did that with. It's so funny. We did that with my daughter. We're not Jewish at all, but like when she Go turned on. thirteen. Go <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gonzalez. My last name's Miranda, and I'm Jewish. Actually, like, my sister lives in Israel. Yeah, geez. yeah. She's. Uh, you look up Ruth Gonzalez. She, uh, well, that's it. She got doxxed. That's oh, well, it. Okay. No, uh, she's been on TV. She was, oh, the, yeah? yeah, she was like the Vanna White of Israel. She Whoa. was, uh, yeah, yeah. So she, she's, uh, she's been on soap operas and stuff. So, my, so I have a little connection. She's there. <laughs> yeah. My nephew is there. And, um, but yeah, just the, like what you, your question was like learning the culture. I think you should do that in any photography you do. If you're going to photograph a portrait of someone, you like, even just a headshot, look mm -hmm. them up. Yep. Check their socials, see if you know if they're more reserved, if they're out there partying. You know, you know who's what, how they they're probably posting how they like 
the way they look, you know. No, it's true. I mean, I think that goes for anything is that you're trying to learn what's important because that's what they're looking for. So even with the zombie cr creature stuff, right? Um, I know the older makeup artists are looking for that universal monsters look sometimes. And if you're not familiar with it, yeah, yeah. it could easily look just like janky lighting. So <laughs> you're, work, you're working for like the makeup artist, like the person sometimes. behind there is, is who cares who's in there? Because oh, it's no, just the, the eyeballs. Models, it's never the model. It's never the model. It's either like a screen test. It's a screen test for something they're trying to get funded. So they need that character to give uh, like media so they can give oppression to a people that might invest. That's cool. Or, Different kind of headshot. Yeah, it is. Crazy. So it, and it I know weird. you used like the Halloween lighting effect, like a little bit more light underneath kind of thing. It's it's a man. Oh, he's it, not giving his secrets out. People. It, well, I did a whole demo. I did a whole live stream, <laughs> and and the the um the store manager was my lizard creature for it. It's on. Is it on this channel? No, it's on the Adorama Vents channel. Sick so, plug. Sick plug. So uh, yeah, if you're not following that channel, you're missing everything that comes out of here except for this show. So Adorama Vents on YouTube, and my next demo is Thursday. Not this Thursday. Next Thursday, the ninth. I'll be doing portraits from scratch. So we're going to start from zero. Tuesday, 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 Tuesday the ninth. Wow. Seth, <laughs> I I don't even know where they just wheel me out. They they open up the yeah. box and kick it over. He came out of the ground. And, yeah. He was like Seth. <laughs> <laughs> they lit the lid and go, the get at it, get to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You live, he lives in the, yeah. I might as well, really. He, I saw Gavin Hoey, I saw <laughs> Daniel and Gavin Seth. Gavin Hoey lives in a shoebox here, yeah. it's great. I love They're it. all downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. You guys are like prisoners. There is someone asking, what kind of bag do you use? Because they're looking for a bag themselves. I have, again, just like cameras, I love all camera bags, but a think tank is usually my go-to. They're right, just right. built like crazy good. And uh, for events, I use, um, they don't even make it anymore. It's like a Tenba leatherette bag because I like to dress up when I shoot. Tenba makes some swanky, nice, classy stuff. Yeah, and uh, it's funny. I, I had this bag, and uh, the best thing is the lid of it, comes, the flap comes off. And I sometimes when you need someone to sit on the stairs or something, like I unzip the... You know, you that's such a weird, quirky, such a bonus. quirky thing. And you know what I did? I left it one time. Like I was doing a portrait shoot and went home, and then I actually drove back to go find it. It was gone. Like who took that? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I went on eBay and I found someone selling it. So it was great. Was it the one? It was the same one, new. No, no, oh. no, 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 not the lid, not the. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, man, that was <laughs> yeah, what imagine? a story. <laughs> yeah, imagine just, just selling the the flat. It found its way back to me. <laughs> it found its way. Back. That would be a great. Story. What is your most used gear that's less than a hundred bucks? The Manfrotto oh, Halo. That's a great. By question. far, is my most used thing ever. Manfrotto Halo. It's, I would say my my camera strap. Uh, use a. Th um, what are they? Optech USA strap system, you know, so you basically can switch out your your uh, straps from any camera. Since I have all the cameras, <laughs> it's good to be able to click on to like the Fuji and then you go to the Sony and then you go to the Nikon, that kind of thing. So Optech USA, under 100 bucks, straps are great. For events, manual or TTL on your flash? Oh, manual, 100%. But that's funny they asked that. We tried, we just shot at the most nightmarish location. Recently, black ceilings, 50-foot ceilings. <laughs> so I had my assistant walking around with an umbrella. Right, right. And he's either close or back, and there's either a group or one person. And I was like, TTL. TL. Yep. Yeah, because it would have been a nightmare. TTL. I remember when TTL first started, and it was rough. It was rough. It, it would just like boom. It and was then... like spaghetti at the wall. <laughs> yeah. like spaghetti at the wall. We think this is what you want. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was. Well, I don't think the TTL was ready for the metering systems in the camera at the time. Probably something just wasn't. I just didn't trust it. But now, I, at this event, the no, Nikon Z8 did great. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Nikon spent a lot of time on their speed lights over the years in their DSLR days. They spent a lot on the CLS system, all that stuff. And honestly, every lighting brand out there has spent an incredible amount of R and D really good. on their TTL. Flashpoint's got good TTL. Profoto's got great TTL. Amcom's got great. I yeah. mean, it's just hard to find bad TTL these days. Unless it's not only that, you can like fire off a shot in TTL and then like push a button and tell it, "Hey, I want, I want that. Stick to that. That'll be my manual setting." You know, right. You power, can lock it in. You can lock it in, right, which right, is right. great. So you're not like when you're editing later, it's like little, you know, changes, you know? <laughs> yeah, consistency is key, especially if you're doing something like an event where you want it all to look. What else we got? What else we got? Yeah, you guys, this is your final call for your questions. Your final call Last here, call, people. Kids. All Last the, call. the secrets. So what's next for you? You, you are pushing hard with the channel? Because I saw a video where you're like, I don't know the future of this channel. Yeah, you know, like the, 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 everything you watch is like work, 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 and hustle, and hustle. And, and I'm 
a little bit past that. I think I'm a little older, and so I kind of want to enjoy life a little bit more. So if I record, it's going to be uh, just fun videos and you know giving back to the community. Uh, but I'm not going to be like, you know, I'm doing two videos a week, guys, and I'm doing this and I'm doing that, you know. So for me, it's going to be where the just, you know, what new cameras are going to be coming out soon, oh, you know, from all. Yeah, this, this year's, year's going to be big. So this, you guys have no idea. This year's going to be bananas. Rico GR4. Not spo sponsored by Rico. We're not saying it's coming. <laughs> What Jeez, man. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> he showed me. And there's a lawsuit. No, no. So it's like <laughs> no, it's not. There. It's going to be a hectic year, though. I mean, if you want to talk about predictions that we don't know anything about, I think Gen 3 Nikon's going to hit. I think we're going to look at some very popular Fuji releases that are going to hit. We have the A93 we know is coming from Sony at the end of February, March's area. Uh, who knows? Canon says we're, look, we're still looking for some sort of flagship mirrorless. We don't yeah. know. Do you, you think know? they'll do Canon will do a retro Canon? I, or would, would that be like a little, it's too late for that? No, I don't think it's too late. I don't think it's ever too late for anything, but I would I would love Canon to recognize their 100-year-old yeah. heritage. Yeah, for They've sure. Yet to do Silver that. and, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think it'd be amazing if Sony did a Minolta. Throw a Minolta out totally. there. Totally. They, 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 they bought my Minolta. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So that's their retro. Is a Minolta. Nice. <laughs> you know, uh, I would love Canon. Same font. Out. Yeah. I think they have, uh, and Quanin. I mean, put out the, why hide the legacy? You're 100 years old. Yeah. And what what I, the knock on these is people don't want the dials, but I, right now I have them parked on, hey, use the front and rear dial. Right. You know, so if you're going to shoot an event, I, you could just use the rear dials. I think camera companies, if you're listening, uh, make the front and rear dials bigger for, you know, just a little bit more usability like these. These are a little larger there. What I love about these is that they're also buttons. Yes. And you can change my F-stop and ISO like yes. on the fly with it. I love That's it. cool. Yeah, it's so But dope. bring the D-pad back, Fujifilm. I mean, I, bring I the D -pad I'm also back. becoming a fan of detachable EVS so that I can pack it down easier. Like, Look I'm how just, small this thing is like for a, a medium format. It's literally, it's if I have a Z8, I put it next to it, it's like, huh, Z8. Uh, but don't you think the screen looks like the first flat screen TVs that ever came out? Yes, it, well, those are projections, right? Like, I was like, <laughs> yeah. this thing. The bezels on this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be jealous. It's okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Not, mine, mine closes. But I do think that that ZF is definitely a precursor to what's to come. I think that's like a Z6 2.5. If it's selling like hotcakes, that's where the market will go. But even like the way it is, like the processor in it, we're going to see that in Gen 3. The, the focusing system, we're going to see that yeah. in Gen oh 3. Oh my God, I'm, we could I'm talk just, all day. Cameras, yeah, cameras, forget cameras, about cameras, it. cameras, cameras. Forget about it. Forget about it. it. <laughs> Yeah, that being said, don't forget, guys, you can check out Omar here. Bada bing. Uh, he's got a great channel if you want any resources. And it's not like brand specific, which I think is the best part, is that he's what catering to a record wide. Myself. I record myself with the a7 IV, sometimes the Nikon. I've been using the ZF a little bit, but a7 IV mostly. Fuji, uh, Sony's great for video. It's so good. I, I think like. I can't find something that's bad for video right now. Totally. <laughs> well, especially for like talking head and stuff and, you know, it's, but it's, if you're going to have a LUT, are we selling LUTs today? I don't have any. <laughs> do you have any? I don't have any presets, man. Yeah. Our hidden agenda. Buy my LUTs. No, just kidding. No LUTs. Wow. What was that? <laughs> Remember, because we, we talked about how there's always a YouTube hidden agenda. Who can you trust? We're he's not getting, selling anything here. He's getting so comfortable. Look at this guy. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to Ace Ventura this up. Oh, gosh. Do you have anything you want to uh, shout out before we call it? No, just uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Keep shooting out there. Practice, practice, practice. If you want to get better, just get off you know, the YouTubes and start use, you know, using your camera. Yeah, and if you're looking for any stuff with uh, lighting, he's got a lot. Not only just camera stuff, but lighting stuff, event stuff, and just like genuine, like, here's what I think about this, and I went and you actually used it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So go check that out. Uh, if you guys are around uh, for next week, Tuesday, I'll be live doing uh, Portraits from Scratch. I'll be shooting live right here on the Adderall Events channel. If you haven't subscribed to that, do it. You're missing everything. Two, I feel like two times a week minimum we're doing something from here. Wow. Check that out. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. I want to thank Rico for sponsoring this one for the thousandth time. <laughs> I mean, we plugged them like 10 times here. I mean, come on. I, well, it's an, I got to say, it's an unsung, unsung brand for sure. Absolutely. You know, and they're doing great things and we want them to do great things. So especially with the... The film project they're doing? Oh, God, don't do it. Don't, don't. <laughs> but they are working on a film project. I mean, they're one of the few, uh, if, if not the only major camera brand that's acknowledging the film craze. For sure. And DSLRs too. They're one of the last brands that are coming out with new DSLRs for people who still... <laughs> 
if you run into a Pentax guy, they're a diehard Pentax <laughs> so guy. Exactly. All three of you guys are just like, oh man, yeah, it's DSLRs. You, you've got to get a Pentax. Pentax. You know? What I would like to see is more Stroh brands make Pentax remotes. That's what mm. I would like to see happen. True. That's not. Yeah, it's not that I didn't common. Even think of that for yeah. sure. You need like the, the single pin dudes. Yeah. Well, yeah. No TTL. <laughs> dudes. <laughs> That's that going to become a called? crew now. <laughs> That's going to become a crew. Listen, guys, go follow Omar. We'll be here all week. And uh, if you haven't and you're new here, hit subscribe. Don't forget to like. Share the video around. Drop some comments for Omar. He's going to stalk this forever. Yeah, man. Uh, hopefully, we can get you on the channel more. For sure. And let's get you on the spot. I want to see you I shoot mean, live, son. I don't know about that. I'm going to make you shoot live, son. <laughs> I'm going to get you... <laughs> Does he got I, it? Do you have, got it? Do you have like a 10 second delay? Then I'll do it live. Yeah. Oh, man. You can do it. You can do it. Listen, if Dan Nora can do it, no, I was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Good seeing you, man. That was great. Thanks for having me, man. I awesome. really appreciate it. You guys have a great start of your new year. And uh, I'll see you at Imaging USA, by the way. At the end of this month, I'll be on stage at Imaging USA. So will Daniel Norton, Ab Say, Lindsay, everybody. Awesome. So go check that out. And uh, yeah, later, guys. Peace.